close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't wanna waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't wanna waste what's left. Hey guys, today on the podcast we got Caitlin Nevins. She was a former professional netball player who used to play for the Melbourne Vixens the Queensland Firebirds, and the Australian Diamonds. Hope you guys enjoy the podcast. My sisters really love meeting her. Thanks, guys. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Oh, that's a really tough question. I think I wanted to copy off my parents, actually. They were both teachers. So um, I was exposed to teaching pretty early on in the piece. But I um, had a little injury when I was 15 years of age to my big toe and had to see a podiatrist. So I'm actually a podiatrist now. So I think that that particular podiatrist was a really um, big influence on um, heading down that career path. Yeah. How would your oldest friend describe you? Oh, maybe daggy and organised. <laughs> what are you most proud of in general life and career? Um. I am really proud of my family. Um, in terms of my career, I think representing the Australian Diamonds was a um, really, really special moment. And I only played five caps for Australia, um, but I still pinch myself that I was able to wear the green and gold. And yeah, representing your country is a, a pretty amazing thing. Yeah. How do you handle hard times? Because you had one last year when you hurt your hip and couldn't play much in your last year? Yeah, I I think that um, life deals, uh, you, you have ups and downs with life and I find that I try to focus on the things that I can control and not worry about the ones that I can't. So if I don't get selected in the team, I um, try to focus on the areas that I can improve um, in terms of injury as well. You have to listen to all of the support staff around you and be guided by what they um, say and, and help you progressing back on court. So injuries can be really tough, but when you are injury, when you are injured, there's always things that you can do for your team. Um, I was an extra set of eyes for the girls out there on court, so I help with a little bit of coaching as well. Um, but yeah, it, it can be tough, and, and you're okay. It's okay to feel. A little bit disappointed with um, some setbacks that come along but if you stay I suppose motivated and you have a, a great support network around you to help guide you through you can certainly overcome them. Yeah was it hard moving from Melbourne down to Brisbane? Yeah it was very hard because all of my family were in Victoria so and friends of course so it was a big move to head to the Queensland Firebirds, but it was a really successful move now that I reflect on it. At the time, there was no guarantees that I would get any court time playing with the, the Queensland Firebirds. So I um, just thought that it was the right decision and I stepped out of my comfort zone and tried to earn the respect of all of these new teammates that I really didn't know much about. And I suppose that led to me working even harder than what I was doing down in Melbourne and it um, certainly paid off in terms of my game and I flourished in the purple dress. Yeah. What's, what, what was the experience like playing for the Diamonds? Well, I remember the first game pulling on the green and gold dress and standing on the sidelines singing the national anthem. I just had goosebumps all down my body. I was just overcome with nerves um, and excitement. And I didn't start that game, um, but I was put on um, around the third quarter. And because it happened so quickly, New Zealand was starting to close down our lead. And the next second, Lisa Alexander came over and said, Katie, you're on. And I just didn't have any time to think about it. I was just out there on court, which I think was the best thing because um, like I said, didn't have time to make myself any more nervous and 
um, really the netball court no matter where you play it's the same dimension so once you're out there it's just another game of netball and, and you can't let the occasion I suppose overawe you but um, yeah it was pretty an amazing experience. Yeah what was it like playing for the Firebirds and the Vixens? Well I suppose the Melbourne Vixens to start off with I grew up playing in um, country Victoria and um, throughout all of my junior years, I aspired to play with the Melbourne Vixens. So to um, receive a playing contract with the Melbourne Vixens was an absolute dream come true. And the girls were all of my role models and um, I was training and playing with um, this amazing group of women and they showed me what it was like to be really professional at that elite level. And I suppose that taste of being with the Melbourne Vixens, I thought, oh, you know, I'd love to be able to play and regularly play out there on court. And with the Melbourne Vixens, I was an impact player and I still had a great experience. And I suppose that's what also led me to the move to Queensland. Um, I was hoping that I might be able to um, get a little bit more court time um, possibly with a different team. And like I said, there was no guarantees. Rose Jenke, when she signed me, didn't say that I was going to be playing regularly or even starting. But I just thought, okay, this is another opportunity in a different state, different team, just to see whether I could get out there on court. And um, so playing with Melbourne Vixens certainly set me up with the rest of my career with the Queensland Firebirds. Um, but yeah, completely different teams and with each team, they have their own unique values and history. So um, I learned a lot about the Firebirds history when I moved to Queensland. Um, I knew a little bit more about the Melbourne Vixens history, like I said, um, growing up in country Victoria. Yeah. Have you always played centre? No. So when I was younger, I grew up in a small country town called Echuca and I started my career as a goaler and it wasn't until I moved, um, I tried out for my first state team that I realised that there was some very tall women out there and I was shuffled into the midcourt. So I was a goal attack and then I went to wing attack, centre, wing defence, back to centre and then I finished my career as a wing attack. Yeah. What was your favourite position, centre or wing attack? I really like wing attack because it's really speedy. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably have to say I, I prefer wing attack. Um, and it's because in the most recent years, that's the position that I've been playing the most and I feel the most comfortable with. Yeah. What was your path to professional netball? So I actually started in basketball. I um, played for Country Victoria um, a lot earlier than I um, made any netball state teams. I made my first netball state team when I was 15 and under. Um, missed out the next year, made it the year after that. Missed out the next year, made it the year after that. And then I had a really nasty knee injury and um, had a knee reconstruction. So I had to be on the sidelines for about a 12 month period, learning how to um, walk again. So unfortunately the timing of that injury just was crucial with my um, pathway, I suppose, because they changed the Commonwealth Bank trophy to the ANZ championship and there were less teams, so less players were able to make the top. So it actually took me a really long time to get my first um, professional netball contract. So um, I got picked up in 2014 with the Melbourne Vixens and then moved up to Queensland from 2015 onwards. Yeah. What age did you get that professional contract? I think I was 24. So I was quite a, an old athlete to be able to get my first playing contract. And then I debuted for Australia at 29 years of age. So I think I was the second oldest athlete to debut for Australia at that particular time. So, yeah. 
Yeah. How's it been studying podiatry? It was hard. Um, it was definitely hard juggling school, juggling university with sport, and then juggling uh, work as a podiatrist as well um, in the later years of my career. So it was definitely hard, but I think it's quite rewarding because it gave me an outlet away from sport because with all sports, it's scrutinised in the media. Everybody has their own opinion. And then if you have a bad game, it can just be blown out of proportion. So what I found is that with my work and with my study, it was just a nice escape. I'd think about something different so that when I re-entered the training environment, um, I was fresh and ready to go. So while it was tough with trying to organise and juggle all of the commitments, it was definitely worth it. Yeah. How's life been since retired? Yeah, it's a bit strange. Um, I had to have knee surgery at the end of last year. I had a knee injury um, that I developed over the last couple of years. So just got that fixed up and trying to still recover from that. Um, but it's progressing really nicely. And I think with COVID-19, though, I am missing watching the netball. Um, so hopefully it starts up again. Um, it just seems a little bit surreal for now. Are you doing some coaching around the junior parts? Yeah, I'm doing lots of coaching, um, bits of travel as well, um, mentoring also. So still being involved with netball, um, working part-time as a podiatrist and then um, the other time in the community with netball, um, helping to develop the next generation of kids. Yeah. How have you been keeping yourself busy and fit during this time? Um, I have actually done a lot of fitness during this time. So my rehab um, process has led me to triathlons, actually. So following surgery, I was allowed to swim first and then ride, and then I've been progressing with my running. So... I've been trying to do all three of those disciplines um, throughout the course of the week and I'm really enjoying the new challenge and just enjoying getting outside and some fresh air. Yeah. Who was the work when you guys went to a hotel, who was the worst roommate to have or was the worst person? <laughs> oh dear. Um oh no, I'd have to say that we were really, um, the way we organised our roommates was that our manager made sure that we would room with a different person every single time. And that was really helpful because you actually got to um, understand and um, develop relationships with each of the teammates. So if you had a bad roommate, which I, I wouldn't even say that I had a bad roommate, um, you wouldn't get annoyed with them because the next time you were with somebody else. So, um, yeah, rotating was really good just because you got to see each of your teammates. And, and when you're on the away trips, that's when you actually develop stronger bonds um, than the home games. Yeah, anyone that did something really annoying or...? Annoying? Um, oh, gosh. Um probably have some that are, yeah, messy, some that get up early, some that sleep late off, um, lots of pranks, but no, I wouldn't say that I get annoyed from it though. It's always good fun. People trying to jump out of doors to scare somebody. Um, there was lots of recordings of people being scared. Yeah. What's the best way to describe you right now? Um, probably calm and relaxed. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> what advice would you give a 12 year old today? I would say if you have a dream, it's worthwhile chasing and it requires lots of hard work and lots of perseverance, but it's definitely worth chasing. Thanks for coming on today, Caitlin. No problems, Max. Thanks. So that was Caitlin Evans on the podcast today. I hope you enjoyed her story on how she became a professional netball player. 
Don't forget to like the video on YouTube and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Really hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang!